present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay. Okay. Another week has flown by. We are here. Welcome to Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. Uh, we are coming to you live and recorded from the Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey. And it is a unseasonably warm, balmy uh, climate change winter afternoon, Saturday afternoon. This is the uh, post uh, happy or merry pagan Christmas and happy Saturnalia Brumalia show, the post holiday show. And uh, I'm your host James P. Madonna and I want to introduce right now my co-host and mentor and the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977, the one and only the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this week, sir? Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. For our post, post uh, pagan uh, Saturnalia Brumalia show. Um, how was your holiday? Mine was pretty lasagna. good. Lasagna. I had lasagna also. Yeah, I and saw brug plate, And brujol and meatballs and Italian sausage. And uh, what a plate! And my sister uh, baked me a uh, a, sugar, a sugar-free pumpkin pie. Again? Yeah, but this time she made it tasty, not bland. But yeah, she put more uh, uh, more cinnamon. Yeah, cinnamon. What goes it? Cinnamon, nutmeg, and all that jazz. Yeah. Well, actually, you can buy the pumpkin pie blend. Blend. I think McCormick makes it. Um, yeah. So everything went well. I I, I drank plenty of eggnog. Uh, oh, I yeah. I could have brought the eggnog. There was plenty left over. I could have brought the eggnog home, but. I felt that I consumed too many carbs during the holiday, and I, I believe eggnog is high in sugar. Is that true, sir? Mm -hmm. so yes, I indeed. So I only took the rum home, and uh, that's okay. R a dark rum on the rocks. I think it was a Captain Morgan they gave me on the rocks with, with lime. Captain Morgan with a lime wedge. Uh, hey, how about that, that article? Uh, uh, on Holistic Health Talk that I posted about uh, the uh, main ingredient, the main active ingredient in psychedelic mushrooms growing new brain cells. That's very positive. I, I know there are certain substances that will grow brain cells. How about motor cells? Yeah, we wish. That's, that's what I'm interested we in. We wish. Motor cells. Uh, other than all the crap that's going on in Washington, which is not, uh, you shouldn't be shocked over, uh, I really don't have any monologue per se. All I have to really say is that uh, the same nonsense happens every year, you know, uh, for the retail industry. And uh, they use the uh, pagan Saint and Claus and all the movies yeah, and the Christmas Claus. carols. <laughs> You know, and all the all the man, the pagan uh, oriented uh, man made traditions to get you to part with all your money <laughs> this time of year and uh, uh, go into deeper debt. Um, and make the rich richer. Yeah, yeah. And, and then on, on the local news, the woman was interviewing children, and I found this a little upsetting. She was interviewing children, asking them. What is the best present you ever got, and what is the worst present? What are your complaints Ooh. this year? Now, listen. American kids are coddled and spoiled as it is. But to put emphasis on the monetary value of your gifts, I mean, when I grew up, it was the thought that counts. And, and, and putting the emphasis on the getting rather than the giving. That's exactly what the mainstream news in our area was doing. The getting, yeah. not the giving. Not the spirit of giving, the, the, uh, the greed of getting. Yeah. There was a, uh, uh, it was on the news, it was a video of a kid, a kid who was out giving 
I had a great kid. He was out giving stuff away. You know what Christmas really well, Remember is? that video I told you about the other day, too, with the... Um, the guy who gave the hundred dollars to the homeless person, yeah, and the homeless person uh, goes into a liquor store, and the the guy follows him with a uh, a camera. Really, and they thought he went into the liquor store, of course, to buy liquor and stuff, but he comes out and he goes uh, by uh, uh, some other homeless people and he gives them gifts. Oh wow. Yeah. That's that's rare. So the guy came up to him and he gave him another hundred dollars. You know what? You know what? The real spirit of Christmas would be, even though Jesus was not born in December. What 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 the real spirit is is people, instead of lavishing their uh, friend their their f ungrateful friends and and, and kids, <laughs> complaining uh, friends and kids, belly aching about their presence, go buy. Th Gifts for poor children, you know, like toys for tots, or you know. But we shouldn't have poor people in America. I know that, and we shouldn't have veterans, uh, homeless, and uh, you know, exactly. and poor. After they, they put their lives on the line. They for might, big business. For this big, war is a racket, as General Schmedley Butler has told us. I don't know if you saw it, but I posted a cartoon of. Uh, it's a cartoon split in half. On one side, it, it, it commemorates Memorial Day and all the wreaths and everybody's honoring the... Uh, the uh, dead. The, the dead, people, uh, men in service people who died in, in, Ameri in wars. Mm. They're honoring the dead. And on, and on the right side of the cartoon, it was a homeless veteran with a sign asking for help. And he's destitute and he's, he's hungry, he's on the street. It's like... And people are passing them by. That, hey, the Republicans, they love that idea because because the dead doesn't doesn't cost money. Die on the battlefield, please. That Don't come back here and cost us money. That, yeah. Right, exactly. That's the Republicans. That's how they treat yeah. the veterans. Now, the, now the, 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 the religious, nutty, wacky, cultist part of Republicans... They they're not really a big fan of um, abortion and birth control contraception, but they don't like. And they don't care about the child that's already born. Mm -hmm. They only care about the kid that's in your in a woman's the embryo and the fetus. Yeah, yes. in, yeah. in the in woman's uh, uterus. So that's like a contradiction. I mean, they don't like abortion and contraception, but not not having abortions and contraception will create m multitudes of unwanted pregnancies and then these are children that need to be supported which goes against the grain of Republicans. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like a contradiction. Well, that, everything, they, everything they do is a contradiction. And as far and, as and, those and, two and things, too. they believe they get that from God. They believe that no abortion stuff comes from God. Oh, like that that crazy bald-headed right-wing pastor. What the hell is his name? The guy that looks like a pedophile with the glasses on. He said something really... Is that Fisher? No, somebody no. else. Well, well right-wing pastors are always saying outrageous things. Oh, they're justifying war and torture now. Yeah, well, they're well, just... But God likes torture. He likes war. God doesn't like food stamps. It's, oh, no. It's, it's, it's more proper to allow the poor to starve. According to the pastor from Texas, the well, uh, gee the whiz, and why does Baptist minister? Yeah, why does God's economics forgive uh, uh, your debts every seven years, and then every fifty years you but get they, your own land back? And uh, uh, for people who own uh, the land and they harvest their land, they're supposed to leave all the food stuffs uh, around the edges so that the poor can come in and get it for themselves. Mm -hmm. And they don't, and God don't like food stamps. No, He don't like a country that has food stamps. And He doesn't has like to rely on. And food He stamps. doesn't. God doesn't like lying, hypocritical, uh, uh, man, men, supposed men of God, pastors, evangelists, whatever, that are rewriting the Bible, which is the violation of the last paragraph of Revelations. Well, yeah. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go to the last page.
Yeah, read it. yeah, 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 of course, because... Uh, read yeah. it, don't thump it. You know, so it's like they're complete liars, proven liars, complete proven hypocrites, but those people out there in all them dar red states in America, in America, America. they keep on voting for these yeah. cultist fiends. Uh, 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 counterfeit Christians. Yeah. Counterfeit Christians. I mean, God doesn't want, like war. He allowed it because that's how ancient Israel, you know, conducted itself. Got my boy. I mean, God didn't like uh, David with 700 wives and 300 concubines either. But he had them. Well, him and Solomon, uh, David and Solomon, were not angels when they were on earth. Of course not. You know, I mean... Uh, that's the point. That's the whole point, you know. When, uh, uh, when, when, when a man sins, he's supposed to repent and not do that again. You know, but uh, you gotta. David must have known that having seven hundred wives was not acceptable. Must have known this. I think. But when he did find out, of course, then he, he changed. I think he. <clears throat> I think these these men had them back in the Old Testament because they can. Well, they of can, course, they, that's what they, that was they all do about. It. I mean, it uh, shows your wealth. You ask, well, same thing with all your animals. Shows you're very uh, horny and get, get, <clears throat> and get laid a lot. <laughs> I mean, I mean, the average man today would love the idea of having all those concubines waiting on him hand and foot. Well, it's not mostly that. It was. Well, like, back it doesn't then, make it right, huh? Back then, it was mostly having children to carry on your heirs. Well, the mortality. And don't forget, the mortality was great at that time. That's and, true. Yeah, the average lifespan was only like middle age, like in forties. Yeah. You know, if if you survive if to you be forty birth. something, yeah. Oh yeah, well, chi child uh, childbirth morta uh -huh. mortality, child mortality. I mean, when you're born and surviving, it's kind of like um, it's kind of like an an animal that has huge litters. Uh, usually, um, their lifespan is really not that long, and they're and they're often prey to many other animals, like a rat, for instance. Like a uh, like a, a turtle, I have a hundred eggs, and they they hatch and they they sea start turtle. going Let's towards the, the the sea, and maybe ninety seven of them become food for other people. Three survive. They don't make it. Yeah, that's the you know that's the and uh, then and then the ones that make it to the water have to. Uh, seek refuge and survive until yeah, they grow up bigger. Yeah, you know, so so therefore Therefore the creature is naturally designed to have a lot of offspring, right? Well in the old days ancient times, you know uh, Man had a mankind had a pretty rough so right. they you had a, an edge. Yes, you they had to bang edge. out a lot of kids Yep, yep, you know uh, because that would be, after all they owned their own land and grew their own food on their land. They were self-sufficient because they had to be. Of course, and that was a uh, that was a plus. So their job was either tending sheep or growing things, yeah. you know, or go shepherd for goats and, well, and what cattle. What about the uh, job for Adam in the Garden of Eden? What was that? To have sex with Eve? Taking care of it. Dressing it. Dressing it? Yeah. Oh, you mean... What you a mean, job that was. You mean was, tilling it, not dressing it. Tilling it, dressing it. I think it. of dressing, I think of the yeah. chunky blue cheese dressing I put no, on my no, salad. No, 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 no. It was Hollywood. a good gig. It was a good gig. They had a perfect gig. That's Actually, correct. Actually, if they didn't screw up, we would not be here now ranting and complaining about everything. We would be in paradise eating mangoes and avocados and papayas. And yeah, you wouldn't have to be forced to go to work for some big corporation. Demand. See? Working for demand. Demand, yeah. S depending on that cash that he gives you, that paycheck that he gives you just right. to survive, your whole existence is there reliant yeah. on some asshole employer giving you a paycheck. You wouldn't have any of that. You wouldn't have any of that. If they didn't, uh, you know, eat the... Uh, and who cares if it was not an apple? It doesn't matter. 
that that that's it's symbolism. It's symbolism. It it's so stupid when people online argue and buck heads over unimportant things, really trivial things. Yeah, I saw a woman uh, a while ago. She said uh, someone had corrected someone when someone said that Jesus died on a cross, and uh, he could know it was on a tree, a stake. He gave his life. So he she says. Well, how is that important? Well, he fulfilled the mission of of giving his life. That yeah, is true. Yeah, but let's not get into that. But they take the cross and they make it a a um, a relic, a symbol. Exactly. They made it something it wasn't. That's the point. Not what what he did or anything like that. He died on a stake. Yeah. That's simple. Yeah. Not of, a cross. Of course he. Cross is not a Christian symbol. Of course he had the ability to escape. You know, a uh, peril, but he chose not to because but he, that's he was not, there. You're adding to. We're yeah. not. We're not. Interested in other in words, it. they were putting power in the symbol of the cross. That's it. They made it a Christian symbol. It's not a Christian symbol. Uh, what Constantine made it a Christian. And then symbol. the Renaissance uh, artisans made all kinds you of know? different fancy crosses. You know, you got the Celtic cross, and you got. This Renaissance, a uh, uh, very artistic cross here, and you know, Ro That's Roman because Catholic. Because the human human beings cannot, they cannot dig the spiritual. They have to feel something in their hands. Tangible, tangible, a relic, something, the bones of John. Well, you know what I mean? I think I think a, a smart Christian knows that there's no power in the statue. It simply triggers. Um, em but God does not want that. Em That's the point. It triggers thought, it, 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 mental images, like when you look God at. God wants to be worshipped in spirit. Yeah. Not intangible. That's the point. But man wants to worship him as he wants to worship. Getting back to Adam and Eve and until to, up until today, yeah. people do not listen and focus because if Adam and Eve listened and focused, they would have obeyed God. And if people listened and focused throughout mankind up until today, I bet most of the problems that mankind has would not even there wouldn't occur. Be there wouldn't be any because God since the Garden of Eden, has, has wanted humans to rely on him because the human spirit needed the Holy Spirit to join with it hey, for the complete man. A father can tell a son, you know, okay. sonny boy. Sonny boy. Yeah, the honeymooners. Sonny boy knows what he's doing. No, uh, no son. Don't let me catch you on the roof trying to fly off the roof on your skateboard and and doing oh, uh, doing flips in the air, landing on the mattress. You're gonna get yourself killed or break your neck, and the kid's gonna he's gonna want to do more, and he's gonna do it anyway. And then the kid ends up in the hospital, paralyzed, and it's like, hey, I told you, I told you, you didn't want to listen to me, you didn't want to listen. Uh, 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 there are people who still do, what do they call it when you force a poor horse to jump a wall? A steeplechase? Equestrian? Steeplechase. Equestrian? Yes, 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 yes. Hey, look what happened to Christopher Reeve. Right? Because he, he the horse got spooked. Well, he, of course the horse doesn't want to jump a wall. He fell badly. That's what really happened. But the horse is, gets spooked, is what I'm saying. Yeah. But the, the rider fell badly when he hit yeah. the ground. That's what happened. The point I'm getting at is throughout life, we have certain warnings that we're told, told about, red flags. Uh, what's that uh, book um, that's full of warnings and, and advice? Uh, Leviticus, right? Leviticus. Or, or is it, uh, was it Leviticus? All prophecy. No, what the, no uh, the one that, the, uh, um, that came from, was it Solomon? Was that Leviticus? Not the one with the with the food, the foods that are unclean. The other one, uh, Pro Proverbs. Proverbs, Psalms, Proverbs. Numbers, uh, all right. Leviticus, Proverbs, Deuteronomy. The, they're all full of advice. There are prophecies in all of them. And if you scoff at advice and you go and you break your neck and you die or you get mm -hmm. paralyzed, you you were 
the, look, the warnings were taught to you. The, the advice was given to you. It's up to you to absorb it and, and think about it. <coughs> and just mm -hmm. follow it, you know. And if you want to be a big shot. Hey, Morton Downey Jr., God rest his soul, used to blow cigarette smoke in people's faces. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, was rebellious about his cigarette smoking. And the guy he got lung cancer and he eventually died. And then when he was uh, when he had one lung left, he did commercials for uh, to tell people to tell young people never to start smoking. Then he became yeah. humble. Oh. When he when he had one lung that was barely working, uh, you know, on on its own, then he became humble. Yeah, that's like the uh, the uh, the uh, retired prostitutes who become a nun, and then they try to tell people, you know. Don't be a prostitute. Trying to undo yeah. years of the damage yeah. done. You know, or or, but or I'm sorry, but people do not listen. You know, or I know some advice. I know somebody who grew up as a spoiled brat from a, whose father was made a hell of a lot of money, yeah. and the person ended up after the father died. The person eventually ended up destitute and broke, and the person yeah. went from being a an arrogant, spoiled right winger to a more humble progressive. Why? Because the person became broke <laughs> and there was nobody else. There was no one in his life. It was like, you know, and he became humble. So, you know, I mean, I guess God has a way of humbling people that need to be humbled. Yeah, but only certain people. Let's, let's get this straight. Some people never all. learn. Let's understand this, you know, uh, once and for all. Yeah. God is not interested in the vast majority of humanity that is saving them now. So, so all this idea in all these Christian cults. Born again born evangelicals. Born again and yeah. this and then God is saving the world and, and the devil is so much powerful, more powerful than God. And you could have a conversation he, with God anytime you feel like it. They say and that, that too. You can't. Not open to it. Once they left the Garden of Eden, he cut himself off. In other words, he really cut himself off. He was only... He was only open to eight people before the flood. Really? Noah's family. That's it. Period. The rest of humankind were drowned. Drowned in the flood. Yeah. Along with the innocent animals who never did nothing. I mean... They went to... In order to... Uh to be in his loving fold you, you have to be one of the elect it's conditional okay it, it's it's well yes you got right now you got to be elect. one of the elect 144,000 that's correct now the born again people say oh that's just symbolic uh -huh. 144,000 doesn't really mean 144,000 what does it mean what does it mean 144 billion hey they changed everything else didn't they didn't they change uh a uh, 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 Friday sundown to a uh, uh, Saturday sundown to uh, Sunday. The the Sabbath is the is, Sabbath? On, is on Sunday. They changed yeah. everything. Sunday school, Sunday yeah. church, Sunday mass, Sunday this, Sunday that. They change everything. So Ice cream that? Sunday. Ah. Uh, now let us sink our teeth ah. into these readings because we were too long winded last week, and we only. We only had like one reading before lunch. So really? Something yeah, like that. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We. I don't. I don't want to get too long winded. The Vatican. All right, we got time. Has arrested the activist who on Christmas bared her chest. Oh. And snatched the statue of baby Jesus. Yikes. In the life-size nativity scene, what did she do? In the center of St. Peter's Square, she bared her. Oh, she wasn't totally naked. She went topless, and she grabbed the statue. Uh -huh. A spokesman said Friday 
emphasizing that the protest insulted the faithful gathered to celebrate Christmas. Well, of course it did. It, it was disrespectful for the, towards the event. Ukrainian activist Yana Zagnova she wanted to get some face time was being held for questioning with possible charges including carrying out obscene acts in public insults uh, and theft well obscene the actual charge is theft and possibly obscene acts if not not going topless is not going topless is just like um if it's unlawful, it's uh, uh, um, uh, not in Vatican City. They have nude, their own um, laws. Indecent exposure would be topless. Vatican City is not part of Italy. It is its own conclave. In other words, they can they can say that going topless in public is a is perver a, is a perversion correct. because it's Vatican City. That's correct. They're self governing. That's correct. Okay. Did you know that Washington D.C. is not part of the United States government either? It is its own conclave. That's why, even though Washington, Washington D.C. is kind of surrounded by the state of Virginia, they are uh, totally self-governing. Has Probably. nothing to do with the state of Virginia. Well, I believe it was. Uh, I think believe it was the, the uh, land was the, the land was given by three states. I think Virginia and two other Maryland, ones. maybe. Probably the to district make up, to the, make up the district of the Columbia. District of Columbia. Right. A topless Zanova grabbed the baby Jesus statue about an hour after the Pope offered his Christmas blessing on Thursday. Oh well. Hey. Things happen, you know. That's correct. People do what they have to do f uh, for attention. Could be a celebrity, uh, entertainer. Well, one thing we did not find out. That's from not that the little, limelight anymore. From that little spotlight. Piece. Yeah. We did not find out the why. That was the end of it, right? They 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 don't mention the why. No, they did not mention. So maybe the why. they they didn't really get anything worthwhile in the interrogation. Now she's a Ukrainian, you know. And maybe she was protesting what's going on in Ukraine. Yeah, and this is how she got her face time. Not, you know, we don't know. It's not the fault of the Catholic Church. That's maybe it had nothing at all to do with... Uh, it has nothing to do with religion. Religion. It's political. Or, yeah, exactly. It has nothing to do with the Vatican. Exactly. But we didn't know that because the, uh, the reporter did not tell yeah. us that. I mean, of course the Pope most likely said that he's against the violence you know, between Ukraine and, and Russia and Vladimir Putin. Of course, he, he doesn't want war. So I don't know why she's taking it out on the Catholic Church. Well, according to some people, the problem in Ukraine is caused by the United States against mm -hmm. Russia. Oh. United, and they United, also um, say that that airplane that was shot down was shot down by the United States, not the Russians. You mean the airline? MH, whatever the, the it was. The Malayan? I think it was a Malayan airline? Yes, it was. That's Something it. like Yeah. Yeah. So the United States is no stranger to sacrificing innocent people are you kidding? The CIA has been doing that for how many years? For the sake of, of corporate greed. Or keeping Mr. Putin in his place. Mr. Putin... He went in there and took over the Crimea. Mr. Putin has made some very true statements. There you go. Since he has been in office that ruffled the feathers of certain people in Washington. I'm sure they did. And, um... Because Mr. Putin does not want to stay in his place. Well, Mr. Putin... We have given him his place, and he will not stay there. He knows. He, he's, he's a pretty smart cookie. He knows what's going on, Vladimir Putin. 
Mm -hmm. he, and he's not going to like kowtow and, and... Well, that's the problem. And, bend, and b bow down to anybody. That's the problem. Especially the capitalist West. Do you think this, uh, this uh, decline in uh, gas prices and oil is uh, not uh, being led by the United States? They want to. They want to stop. The, they want to. In my opinion, they want to stop the green movement. No, they want to stop profits going to Mr. Putin. How is Mr. Putin, Mr. Putin. involved with the gas industry? <coughs> the what? oil. The oil industry. He supplies Europe with natural gas. Oh, natural gas. Yeah. Natural I... gas. We're not talking about oil. Where do you think we get natural gas from? We're not talking. You're not talking about oil, petroleum. You're talking about natural gas. I'm talking about oil. He supplies oil too. We get natural gas from the oil, you know, being drilled. No. You ever natural see the gas flames? Is methane. You ever see the flames on top of the oil rigs? Yes. That's natural gas burning. They used uh, okay. to just, they used to just burn it off in the old days. So Putin, they didn't, they didn't save it and bottle it and all so this other shit. internationally, when it comes to fossil fuels, Vladimir Putin has a lot more clout, a lot more pull than, let's yes. say, the Koch brothers. And right now, with the gas prices going down, he's not making enough for his economy. We are strangling it. That's their biggest, uh, that's their, it's like Venezuela, it's like Saudi Arabia. This is their biggest thing in their economy. So it, it's spite work. Ah! Just like the uh, Cuban embargo was spite work. For 54 years. Boy, for, did that work well, didn't for it? For 54 years. Yeah. That worked really well. I don't think it hurt the Castros. Not at all. Hurt the And in fact, it made them stronger. Hurt the poor people of Cuba. For standing up. And then you to got the tiger. Got this, this pansy ass uh, Rubio bitching and moaning about lifting the embargo. Rubio is an idiot. Number one. Okay, and why people vote for idiots is beyond me. But he's an idiot. Well, the all the the uh, the uh, the crackers in uh, central and northern Flo base. Florida voted. For for him, for Rubio and and the Republican governor yeah. re-electing the Republican the right wing, all-headed governor, the right wing uh, 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 people who came over from Cuba to Miami. Yeah, that's who, yeah, that's who voted for. You mean the the Batista people? The Batista people, yeah. That had businesses over there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we're talking and about. They don't want you know. They don't want to. Uh, I'm talking about the Florida. have relations. I'm talking about the Florida crackers. Yeah, that, we have Florida crackers, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're in the north. Yeah. They, uh, you know, I guess by Tallahassee, Pensacola, Jacksonville, you know. Uh, and Miami. The Central Florida, huh? Miami. No, Miami, South, south Florida is. Uh, yeah, but that's where they are. The right wings, Cubans that came over here. You mean there are still? Yeah. Right wing. A Hispanic Cuban. Yeah, they own Miami. Mi the, uh, a, mi a minority group that's Republican. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Yeah, but I thought the minorities are all struggling, and, and they vote Democrat. I thought they're all struggling. Where? These people have moolah. What about the Wolf uh, County in, in in Kentucky? Wolf County. In Kentucky. They're on food stamps. They're poor, and they vote Republican. Those, those are the those are the morons I was talking They're about. They're yeah, the morons. Did you remember? You, did you see that evolution banner, where it says, uh, "We have the primates, you know, the apes and monkeys." It's on one on on the left side of the banner. We have man on the right side of the banner. So, if evolution was true, whatever happened to this group? And and it shows. The transition of an ape turning into a human. Where is this group? And somebody's mentioned, oh, they're in West Virginia or Kentucky. Yeah. I says, well, actually, Kentucky, because yeah. they're very, they're impoverished. They don't have a pot to piss in, and they keep voting Republican. Yes, yes. They yes. reelected Mitch McConnell. So, you know, 
that is insanity. Yeah, Mitch McConnell, who's putting up a banner that he wants to get money out of politics. What the hell are Excuse you kidding me? Excuse me? Mitch McConnell? Yeah, up on Facebook. The, uh, 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 the Republican that um, is not shy about taking gifts from corporations? No. That's the one. Wants to get money out of politics? That's the one. You think maybe they're lying uh, for, yeah. for, for 2016? When a Republican's mouth is moving, he's lying. You think that this is part of uh, ensuring that a Republican wins in 2016? To, to, he's making nice, nice with the people. Well, it's it's part of what they do all the time. The Clear Skies Amendment. You know what I'm saying? They tell you one thing, but they they title it something else, something that's well, benign. The, the, there's nothing. There's the, there's nothing uh, clean about the Republican Clear Skies Amendment. There's nothing clear yeah, and clean about it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. They say they 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 say something. They do something which is just the opposite. Yeah, and in reality, Republicans uh, they 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 they're all for just deregulation of of companies and big business. The deregulation uh, allows for pollution. Well, we just saw that with that uh, amendment that was thrown into the uh, spending bill. That the uh, the banks can continue with their speculation, etc. If they get into trouble again, the taxpayer will bail them out again. Which is the middle class ta uh, people? Okay. It's not going to be the rich because they don't pay any taxes. <coughs> All right, continue. I need your perspective. My wife and I have been married for thirty-five years. Even though she is rarely interested in me, I don't think she has ever been physically unfaithful. But, ever since the technology has become available, she has been a drunk texter. Addicted. Addicted to texting. Well, addicted to the booze, but then doing the texting. Oh, both. <laughs> <laughs> For a long time, she denied it, but she finally admitted that she was sending flirty, silly messages to male friends of ours. No, it's like a, like a little, little online fantasy thing going. Even though I told her I thought it was inappropriate and disrespectful, she insisted it was just harmless fun. It, it, he's right. It's it's disrespectful. Then she received a text one night after she was asleep. Well, the guy said something sexual. I tried to ignore it, but her phone kept beeping every five minutes. Oh! So I finally got her phone out of her purse. Push the OK button and make it stop. I didn't read the message or anything. The next day when she saw she had missed the text, she became unglued. She yelled at me! Yeah. What does he have to do with the text coming in? Accusing me of reading her text and checking her call log. When I explained what happened, she called me a liar. That's when I began wondering what was there that she was so worried about. Yeah, well, hacking and snooping one's privacy is not, doesn't help the situation. Is but it? he didn't do that. But he didn't he do shut that. it off. Because he couldn't, he couldn't sleep because of the constant beeping. She claimed there was nothing, that it was just a privacy issue. So then I called her a liar. Why, why would a so-called online friend uh, continue to bother somebody that late? That's not good either, isn't she a married woman, no less? 
So I called her a liar, and we had an ongoing dispute for a week, with both of us, both of us saying a lot of mean things. Well, something's missing from their marriage, obviously. Well, he set it up there. She's not interested in him sexually. Well, that well, there you go. After thirty-five years. Fortunately, we have mostly gotten past it, but I can't stop wondering what was in her phone that day. I contend there should not be anything in there that her spouse could not see. And she continues to insist there isn't, and that it is just a privacy issue. What do you think, Amy Dickens? Let's rewind your question and go back to the phrase, even though she is rarely interested in me. Well, usually when, when, when a married couple has children, they grow apart. The sensuality leaves the uh, relationship, unfortunately. This is your wife, not a sorority sister. Her choice to drunk text is juvenile and disrespectful. You should not sneakily comb through your wife's phone, but you weren't doing that. When this became a problem between the two of you, your wife should have readily offered to show you her phone. Oh, boy. You are wise to understand that you cannot control your wife's actions, but it would be nice if she would. You say you are mostly past to this, but in my view, if you want to have a healthier, satisfying, and more transparent partnership, you too have some work to do. Yeah. Writing about this and sweeping it under the rug doesn't seem fair to you. Something is causing her to spend all this time with online friends and um, Obviously, there's a problem in the marriage. Uh, you know, they, they, people don't realize that it's, it's a lot of work. It's a constant, ongoing uh, effort to keep a monogamous relationship at that high pitch level. You know, uh, 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 keep the flame going in the in the in the fireplace. You know. It, got, the it flame takes work. Eternal. The like eternal the flame, flame at uh, JFK's uh, burial. Oh, well, it's easier eternal. to use a, a fireplace. If eventually you have to put more logs in it, you know, if a couple doesn't put more logs in it, the flame goes down. That's actually it's not a bad metaphor. Metaphor, yeah. yeah. So anyway. No wonder so many Republicans are cheering our president's record on the economy. I don't see that. No, I don't know. It, not at all. Republican Mitt Romney said during the 2012 campaign that if Americans elected him, he'd get the unemployment rate down to 6% by 2016. Until they caught him. Uh, on, in a private conversation on a uh, recorded uh, statements he made. <laughs> President Obama won, and the unemployment rate dropped below 6% two years faster. Candidate Newt Gingrich said during the 2012 primary campaign that if Americans re-elected the president, gas prices would reach $10 per gallon. Never happened while Gingrich would push gas down to $2.50 a gallon. That's what he says. It's cheaper now. Right now it's cheaper than two fifty. Oh, his record speaks for itself, Barack Obama. I mean, the numbers are there. He's the national average at the pump at this writing is a little less than $2.38 a gallon. I remember when people were bitching that, that gas went to a uh, dollar a gallon. I remember under George Bush it was nearing four dollars. Yeah, especially in some states. 
you know, in some areas the gas was high, like Florida, the gas was, was always pretty, pretty high in some parts of the country. In some countries outside the U.S., the gas is very high. Five dollars a gallon is the norm in some countries. Yes. Candidate Tim Pawlenty said trillions of dollars in tax breaks would boost economic growth to 5%. Here we go. Is that the trickle-down bullshit? Obama raised taxes on the wealthy and GDP growth has now reached 5% anyway. Since the first quarter of 2009, the Standard & Poor's 500 is up 157%. The unemployment rate is down two and a half percentage points. Federal debt is down seven percent, and quarterly gross domestic product growth is up ten point six percent. And millions who were previously uninsured now have health insurance. True, very true. Well, forget about uh, tax breaks for rit the rich and American corporations. Forget about trickle-down in economics because it never happened. It was all bullshit. What we have is siphon up to the top 20%, the oligarch. Siphon up economics, the devil's economics. There is no trickle-down economics. Got it? So this is a siphon. Got it. It's a siphon. All right. For years now, late on spring nights, a small cadre of researchers has stepped into hip waders, flicked on headlamps, and lugged recording equipment deep into the marshes oh, wait. of New Jersey. Oh, hip waders. Correct. I was. I, I thought it maybe was real cool waders at a restaurant. Uh, hip waders. <laughs> Oh, I get it, okay. Then they listened. Listen. And George Costanza says, I not only look for work, I listen for work. I look and I listen. Look and listen. Tell them it's Vandalay Industries. Yeah. <laughs> you sell latex. Vandalay Industries. Where Kramer goes, oh no, you got the wrong number. This is an apartment. Vandalay Industries, and he's running out. His, his pants are down to his ankles, and yeah, he yeah, trips. Yeah, out of the toilet. Yeah, you know. Uh, the scientists who study frogs that live. Uh, I like frogs in patches of wetland that most people don't give a thought about have developed an ability to distinguish the breeding calls of various species that fill the marsh nights with a grating cacophony. C cacophony of uh, cockamamie claptraps? Recently, like. that unusual skill, combined with the tools of modern science, helped a team of Rutgers University researchers complete the identification of an entirely new frog species that has been living in the Meadowlands for millennia. A new species that has been living right here locally in the Meadowlands swamp? A new species in, 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 in the overly developed New Jersey. How about that? Near where Turnpike Exit 16E is. The team, led by Jeremy Feinberg, a Rutgers doctoral candidate used genetic testing and bioacoustic analysis, along with observations from field biologists, to identify the Atlantic Coast leopard frog. Well, leopard frogs are common. That I know. You say Atlantic, the Atlantic Coast would be the eastern. Well, that's not a new species. As a species distinct from the southern and northern leopard frog. Okay, so they discovered a new species of leopard frogs. That's correct. In fact, they have proved 
that the species lives not just in the meadowlands but also in wetlands from Connecticut to North Carolina. Feinberg did not set out to discover a new frog species. Instead, he wanted to find out why southern leopard frogs were still so abundant in New Jersey, but had vanished from Long Island. To understand that phenomenon, he collected southern leopard frogs' eggs in the New Jersey pine lands and transplanted them to the ponds in Mashomac Preserve on Shelter Island. <clears throat> between the north and south forks of Long Island. But making the trek between southern New Jersey and Shelter Island was time-consuming for Feinberg, who lives in Brooklyn. Yeah, you can't let him go in Brooklyn. <laughs> so, when he heard that someone had found some southern leopard frogs on Staten Island, he investigated. He went during breeding season and listened. Listen for work. Look for work. Listen for work for their chorus. It was so different from what I had heard from the southern leopard frogs in New Jersey, he said, the call was really off. That turned his research project on its head. Call was off? What is he, a judge on American Idol or something? Feinberg came across references to a possible species distinct from the southern leopard frog, some dating back decades. Oh, this is another species. It's the species he found. The Atlantic coast. But they weren't sure about it at yeah. that time. Okay. Now they are. Because they have discovered it. Okay? Oh, boy. Yeah. Well, there are, I just want people to know, it's just the, the known species of creatures on this planet is just the tip of the iceberg of what's really out there. There are many unknown species of many creatures and plants yet to be discovered. Well, that's what it looks like because they, every now and then, they keep finding something. Same thing with marine creatures. The same thing with. Uh, and we're anything. not sure about Nessie yet, are we? What did they say? It might be a coelacanth? Uh, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Something of that nature. But but Nessie is not the only sighting. There's, there, there's they have Chessie seen. There's Chesapeake Bay yeah. Chessie. There's uh, uh, Lake Champlain in yeah. New York State. There's supposedly yeah. one up there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And they all are described as uh, looking like, I guess you would call it a coelacanth. I guess you would call it, because some people have seen it. Uh, a skinny brontosaurus with fins. Aww. Flippers, flippers, I'm sorry. Flippers. Flippers. Quite some time ago, Yes. before we were married, but when our relationship was serious, my husband engaged in a flirtatious weekend with another woman in our social circle. Social what? Circle? Circle. 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 How do these people have these affairs uh, unnoticed? I mean, I'm, I don't know. Go ahead. He eventually admitted this to me after it had been gossiped about far and wide. The story was that on a weekend trip with several of our friends, there was heavy drinking. Uh-oh. A flirtation with no physical contact developed. Yeah, but alcohol is an aphrodisiac to women. She has told many people that he made a genuine pass at her and she refused. Maybe she didn't have enough alcohol. <laughs> Everyone was there refutes this. Ah, uh, they kept it a secret. But my husband admits he may have been so drunk that he did it and doesn't remember. 
My grandfather used to say, a stiff prick has no conscience. Especially an intoxicated uh, one. Well, how did he even get it up if he was intoxicated that he couldn't remember? Yeah, men, it works the opposite you with know? men. You know, alcohol. Um. We have addressed the drinking and disrespect, and it has caused major turmoil in our relationship, which is otherwise wonderful and perfect. Since finding out, I have questioned everyone who was there and had countless conversations with my husband. I have sought counsel with people I respect. However, I still think about it all the time. I feel angry when the woman's name is mentioned and immediately think about it when anything related comes up. My husband loves my children from a previous marriage and is everything I ever hoped for in a partner. I have truly forgiven him, but I can't stop Torturing myself. How yeah. do I let it go? But did he actually cheat? He doesn't remember. <laughs> oh, uh, it's a tough one. Amy Dickinson's answer. It's a tough one. Soliciting the version of every other person who was present and asking them to judge your husband's and this woman's behavior is not helpful. This long ago incident has obviously called up some deep issues for you. Perhaps you were burned in your previous marriage and your suspicion is heightened. But one sure way to introduce a toxic element into your current relationship is to double down and make your husband pay for the accumulated sins of another. Yeah. Well, he could be lying about not, not remembering, or he could be honestly not remembering. <coughs> yeah, maybe he could say, hey, don't, you know, don't remember, because he don't want it to pursue it any further. It's over, it's done, it's finished. Stop obsessing about it. Two ships passing in the night. They may not even pass. I don't remember. They might have gotten stuck. You have not forgiven your husband. If you had... You would not continue to punish yourself. I suggest you ask him for a sincere apology and a guarantee that this will never happen again. Then you should mutually agree that this matter is now over and done with. Null and void? Null and void. Closed. Lock eyes. Shake hands. Hug it out. And turn the page. Shake hands? Oh. Or makeup sex. Will that do? Okay. Is it time? Is it time for your lunch? It's time for the uh, my lunch. We're gonna take a break, and uh, I uh, we will be joined uh, right now after we we say you know after we uh, depart from you. We will be we will be joined by our commercial voiceover specialist <laughs> William H. Morrow the third with his words of wisdom and promo. So we'll catch you for the second half of the show when we return from lunch. Hi, I'm William Morrow. Wake up people, because the truth is often, very often, a very, very hard pill to swallow. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times. So you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen. For the real hard-hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. 
Bye-bye. All right. We're back. We're back. Thank you very much, William H. Moore III, for doing promo and your words of wisdom. Now we are back for the second half of this show, The Balance of, of Uncensored Hard-Hitting Truth. So let us sink our teeth back into these readings. Belly filled? Yes, from lunch. Yep. Yep. All right, let's see. Uh, uh, what you got there, Chief? What a, the Bush administration and their Republican cohorts in Congress fostered a culture of fear. And in the name of protecting the country from external enemies, abridged our civil liberties, practically nullified habeas corpus, and tried to take away our other rights and stifle dissent. They were conditioning the citizenry to accepting the first steps in establishing a totalitarian state. Yeah. Well, to this day, uh, uh, Dick Cheney really doesn't feel any remorse for anything. And unfortunately, the Obama administration has nearly followed in the Republican footsteps really? by adopting the same or similar repressive measures, such as eavesdropping on our worldwide communications without judicial oversight, spying on our domestic and international travels and making us partially undress before we board an airplane. Well, not only that, the, uh, the government as well as the local police have the green light as far as spying on us. Intercepting our private uh, uh, activities. You see that state uh, wants to make it illegal for you to record the police. Well, gee, then you got to think, what are they hiding? What are they afraid of that they're, they they want to do this? Well, they're admitting uh, guilt when they when I, they. When I'm it. sure it has to do with doing things illegally. Well, you know, by by by. By worrying about being recorded, it's almost like an admission of guilt. That's correct. That's correct. It's also an admission of something that you never, you don't see or hear too much of lately, or or when when these uh, things come about, when there's a confrontation between the police and a citizen. We pay the police's salary. We are their boss. To serve and protect. They're being paid. However, supposedly serve and However, protect. that Supreme Court law said that they are not to serve and protect. Their job is to enforce the law. And they're being Period. paid. In other words, they're being paid by the taxpayers that they are abusing. Exactly. Are paying their salary. That's the correct. same thing goes for the crooks in Washington. Correct. Being paid by, by we the Us. people. And they are stepping on our necks. Yes, as we're paying their salaries. Correct. Yeah. Now I'd like to see you do that. Anybody do that in some big corporation? Well, Bernard Madoff. You'd be out on your ass in no time. Bernard Madoff went to prison because he he robbed the one percent, and that was a no no. Oh yeah. He once he start robbing the one percent. You know, I mean, it's okay to rob the little guy, oh, yeah. you know, in the eyes of our, our leaders. But, they do it all the time. Uh, yeah. But, um... In reality, we, the people, are the ones to blame. Yep. We gave power to a morally and intellectually bankrupt group of politicians. And we re-elect them. By abdicating our responsibilities. We acquiesced with very little discussion of their excesses. Out of fear fostered by the political establishment, we overlooked the admonition of Benjamin Franklin. 
quote, They who can give up essential liberty to obtain a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. Ben, Frank, ben Franklin made a very clever s statement when he was alive about people uh, celebrate Christ's uh, birthday, but they don't follow his teachings. Well, of course not. Come on. We have expanded, expended much blood and treasury in quiotic revenge ventures hoodwinked by manipulation of intelligence and allowing the politicians to wage war in our name to benefit multinational corporations. Mm -hmm. We have deposed Saddam Hussein. For sure a tyrant and a scoundrel. But if his own people did not rise against him, was it our place to bring him down? And there were no weapons of mass destruction. Right, exactly. We we interfered in uh, in uh, a another culture uh, uh, that uh, did not ask for help. They they did not ask the United States for help. Yeah. So if nobody asks you for help or advice, you don't volunteer it. You know. Well, oh, as Dickie Cheney said, they will greet us as liberators. They don't want American capitalism. They don't want the capitalism of the West. They don't want it. The people really don't want it, and they've shown that they don't want it. Uh, where were they? Members of past administrations still insist that the government can, with full immunity, use totalitarian measures within our borders. After the Eric Snowden revelations and the recent congressional report on the excesses of the CIA, perhaps, it is time that the record is opened wider. During a meeting at General Motors... Oh, it still exists? Obama saved it. Oh, okay, yeah, they still make Chevrolet and... and uh... The CEO asks, what is our job? A naive junior executive volunteers to make cars! Duh! And to make them better! No. <laughs> no? Our job is to make money, was the response. Really? Sure, that really uh, gives Americans incentive to buy American cars, doesn't it? Whether that story is true or apocryphal <clears throat> is not the point. But this is the same mistake editorial page editor Alfred P. Doblin makes. He speaks of America and freedom and liberty. In the movie... Killing them softly, Brad Pitt argues for the money promised to him. His employer responds just like Doblin. Pitt explains that Thomas Jefferson was a rich property owner who didn't want to pay taxes to England. So he wrote these pretty words, All men have created equal. Yeah, if you're rich and white. The illiterates swallowed the bait and went out to fight and die for the idea. Here's Pitts closer. America is not a country. It's a business. Yeah, well, a, 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 a capitalism, crony capitalism, under conservatives uh, is just it's just a business. It's just it's a corporate plutocracy. And while brave Americans are willing to fight and die for freedom and liberty, big business is not. 
Well, I have a I have a bone to pick uh, um, with um, the local news media. Uh, let's just use an example here in New Jersey, News 12 New Jersey. They talk about such trivial, unimportant things going on, and they never mention what's really going on that's important for people to know. The real dirt, the real shit that's going on, they never mention it. They just mention very trivial things, like mostly like lately talking about, you know, promoting retail to get people to go out and shop for the holiday season and, uh, 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 you know, very, very unimportant subjects. Boring to me. Boring. Yeah, very boring. And, and uh, uh, they're like, um, it's like a distraction. You know, look at over here, but not over there. Yeah. You know, it's like they're keeping the real hard-hitting truth from the public. And this is the mainstream media in general, but this is even worse at News 12 New Jersey. You well, know? they they are saying uh, lately uh, Al Jazeera America has been putting out stuff that the other networks do not, and people are noticing this. Yeah, well, I was told that... Uh, that ISIS is, uh, you know, uh, breaking into uh, uh, non-Muslim homes in, uh, I guess, in Syria, the Middle East, on uh, non-Muslim homes, homes, and murdering the whole family, like for, like conversion by the sword. How come conversion. you don't hear any more about the uh, airstrikes and stuff? We don't hear about any of it. No, no, no. Ground troops, airstrikes. Yeah, nothing. No, nothing. It's gone off the uh, front page. Off the front page. Yeah, just like Ebola went off the front page. There you go. There you go. Oh, they had everybody shaking in their boots. Epidemic for the United States of Ebola. Nobody says a word about it. Nothing. You know, then the, the three Americans were beheaded. and Of course, they were not rescued by SEAL Team 6. And when they, they were, after they were beheaded and everything, nobody really, it's not headline news. No, not anymore. Okay, and uh, this is why, um, this is uh, one of the important parts of um, internet news, online news, is because uh, anything beyond the mainstream, anything aside from the mainstream, is going to give you the real facts. I'm not talking about bullshit like the onion, you know, satire, lying satire from the onion. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about legitimate online news. Yeah, I like the Young Turks, like there's the Huff, How about the Huffington Post? Huffington Post even. I have problems with her for selling uh, Pacman, David Pacman. Yeah. <laughs> All of these uh, places, they they bring up stuff that you're not going to hear on the the big networks and yeah. stuff. Well, recently on the Huffy, on, on the Young Turks, the woman that uh, he, gentleman speaks to a young woman, she was uh, saying that uh, marriage with uh, the millennia generation uh, is is way down because of uh, 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 well, they noticed that. Marriage is way down with the millennia generation, but the amount of men watching porn a lot has gone up quite a bit. A lot more young men are watching porn and saying no to marriage. Uh -huh. And they're trying to make the correlation. You know, um, and what she failed to mention is um, that it takes two to do to tango, and people today seem to be very selfish and materialistic and demanding. And in order to have a marriage that works, you have to have two unselfish people that are willing to make it work and uh, go in with the right attitude. And, uh, and, and plus there's the cost factor, cost of living factor is astronomical 
because, you know, what I had posted was a young woman, nine times out of ten, unless she is really into her career, nine times out of ten, a young women want to have children, and which means they are going to most likely stay home, and then all the responsibility and stress is put on the man, and it's a very expensive to have a one income, uh, one breadwinner family today. It's ex ex extremely expensive for that to happen, you know, and uh, the, 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 the man in the house, he better be bringing home a lot of bucks. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, it, it, she could have touched upon those subjects, you know, I, I mean, uh, people get divorced at a drop of a hat, you know, they don't keep their marriage vows like they used to, so on and so forth. Another reasoning there is that a lot of people don't want to uh, buy the cow when the milk is free. Yes, that's another thing. That's, <laughs> that's another thing. Uh, so, uh, and, and and a lot of people that were married before, many of them choose not to get remarried because they don't want to be bothered. They don't want to yeah. go through that shit again. You know. Yeah, that's true. You know, you're. Uh, you're seriously involved uh, you got to deal with the like the article that you read before about the woman uh, the, you know the woman having online male friends and and flirting flirting Texting. online and uh, you know and then then you have uh, your spouse is snooping around looking through your Ooh. personal things and possibly trying to hack into your uh, let's say email and you know a lot of people don't want to answer to anyone, uh, well, it shouldn't be. A, it should not be about controlling another person. Relationships it should not be about control. It should not be a, you know, mommy, child, or little girl, daddy situation. It should be two equal adults. It's been written. Yeah. That love is a many splendid thing. It can be. Yet real love is difficult to find. Isn't it funny that he's reading this right now? Saying that love of mankind is in short supply. Very difficult to find. In and around the world. Unconditional love. Many struggle with the bare essentials of life while others have too much in the way of wealth. Many wealthy families are concerned with passing on the generational wealth they have without the slightest thought of sharing with those in need. Yeah, they hoard, they hoard their wealth. They, they, they're stingy. These families need to be more conscious of the need around them and not to ignore them. Taxes on wealth need to increase to spread revenue to those at the bottom. It's time to revive that discussion during this holiday season. Well, it's the same thing every year, you know, it's a... Uh, it's a pagan holiday, so I, I, I'm not shocked about the materialism and the exploitation by the, the retail industry and um, all this crap and you know uh, people trampling one another oh great love there yeah there's a lot of love there whoop de do it all does not shock me because uh, Christmas is not a real Christian holiday it's not I hate to burst your bubble or you lemmings out there, but it's not. <clears throat> a mentally deranged man with a long list of prior arrests shoots his ex-girlfriend, gets on a bus, and goes to New York City where he assassinates two police officers. Oh, that guy. That was a horrible series of violence 
which Mayor Bill de Blasio had absolutely nothing to do with. This is the Brooklyn incident? It, was a, it took place in Brooklyn. Instead of listening to the disgraced former police commissioner Bernard Carrick, people should read Karim Abdul Jabbar's essay in Time magazine on this subject. He calls out those who are trying to use this terrible incident for their own aggrandizement. Yeah, he's kind of involved, I hear, with uh, political issues. I would say so. Yeah. Uh, he's on death row. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar? Oh, no, excuse me, that's the uh, basketball player, right? Kareem. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, for, formerly Lou Alcindor, is, uh, is a... Re that was his name? Lou Alcindor? Yeah. Uh, well, know. Muhammad Ali was Cassius Clay. Cassius Clay, I remember, but not Lou Alcindor. Cassius Marcellus Clay. Yeah, Lou Alcindor was, uh, became Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I think he played for the Milwaukee Bucks. Where was this outrage on the part of the right-wing media when Cliven Bundy's followers were pointing guns at federal law enforcement officials in Nevada last spring and oh, summer? that's right. The ranch, the rancher, the big ranch man, Cliven Bundy. Bundy was the darling of the conservative media until he started giving interviews and exposed who he really was. He didn't even care if the other ranches were paying the fee. He was all for yeah. himself. Well, we don't know what happened, did we? I mean, do we? No, that, that, there was no follow-up. That went away. Yeah. That went away. It disappeared it's coming. into the ether. Here today, gone to, Ma uh, to Maui. I mean, tomorrow. I wish I could go to Maui. Yeah, it's, uh, it's gone. The Murdoch publications in England, the people who gave us the hacking scandal, even had a term for what is being done to de Blasio. It's called monstering. And it means to attack someone relentlessly and not let facts stand in your way. What do you want? Mayor de Blasio. Well, they want, what do they want Mayor de Blasio to do? Oh, they're trying to hook him up with the blacks. And he's sympathetic for the blacks, but not the cops. This guy who's the head of the PBA over in New York no. is a jerk. And, and, and anything the cops do is fine with him. Anything. He was very sympathetic with the, with the two innocent police officers. Uh, being uh, executed. He was very sympathetic with that. And he's very sympathetic about any person being murdered. Mayor de Blasio has not attacked the police. He has simply tried to make the police department even better than it already is. Does anyone think that Police Commissioner William Bratton would work for a man who wanted to hurt the police? I mean, the police are in a position of authority. They're 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 they they legally carry weapons with them, and they should be re responsible. People, uh, you know, servants of the public. They should they should not be uh, take it upon themselves to be uh, judge and jury, and executioner. Judge Dredd, remember that movie? Yeah, with Sly Stallone. Sly Stallone, baby. Uh, uh, crime is a disease, and Judge Dredd is the cure. Cure. <laughs> yeah, we. He was I, judge, uh, 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 executioner, and the whole, you know. Thing. It, he was like a uh, a futuristic high tech, a uh, uh, Charles Bronson and of Death yeah, Wish. I remember that one. Of Death, Death Wish. Wish. Yeah. But I don't mind a Charles Bronson Death Wish or a Judge Dredd if they are in the right. If they're nice, good guys, and they're in the right, and they go after the real evil and perpetrators. But that's why we have such a thing called due process. Yeah, not doo doo. Due we, process. We try to make sure that we're in the right before we do something, rather than just have some individual out there make decisions. 
like some cop making a decision that somebody selling loose cigarettes has to die for that crime. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not a capital crime. You don't die for selling loose cigarettes. Yeah. Meanwhile, uh, Goldman Sachs and uh, all those Wall Street crooks did much worse. Of course. And caused a lot of damage to individual people and yeah. homeowners and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Yes, yes. Feeling tense? Sometimes. You're not alone. Thanks to too many bills, too much to do, relationship conflicts, and health problems, one in four Americans say they felt stretched to the breaking point in the past month, according to a recent nationwide survey. And half of us had faced one of life's major stress boosters in the past year. A birth, a death, marriage, divorce, or buying and selling a home. So, yeah, t today's modern living is, is, uh, is wrought with uh with uh, traumatic experiences. Life's ups and downs don't have to take a long-term health toll. True, <coughs> excuse me, chronic stress increases your risk for all kinds of health problems and can make taking care of the ones you have more difficult. But tension-taming strategies can make you, f make you feel so good today and reach deep into your body, flipping switches to create better health for the long run. Case in point, researchers from Canada's University of Calgary discovered that breast cancer survivors who practiced a simple daily meditation had longer caps on the ends of their DNA compared with survivors who didn't take these stress-busting mental breaks. I tell you, when I think of breast cancer survivors, I think of Suzanne Summers. She went totally alternative. She beat it. These caps are called telomeres. There you go, the telomeres. They work like the plastic bit at the end of a shoelace keeping everything intact, allowing chromosomes to reproduce so they can repair right. and replace other cells that are injured. Telomeres naturally get shorter as we age. Right, and that's where uh, uh, nutritional supplements like carnosine help. And resveratrol. And resveratrol. But research indicates that stress accelerates their fraying, raising your risk for heart disease diabetes, even cancer. Fortunately, further research reveals that there are a wide variety of do-it-yourself tension tamers to help keep that from happening. These do-it-yourself tension tamers are good for everyone at any age. Whether you enjoy hanging out with your friends, meditating or soaking in a hot tub? Hint. If you're the super busy type who has trouble taking a little me time, think of relaxing as a health prescription instead of an indulgence. There you go. Well, you saw that banner about the benefit of naps? Yes, half hour. Uh, Various interval naps? Hour and uh, hour and a half. The, yeah. <clears throat> the uh, hour one, not so good. The half hour, great. And the hour, uh, hour and a half. Which one was rated the best, though? The half hour. The half hour nap. Yeah. Okay. And another thing is if you're a super busy person, and let's say you have a desk job, you could take off your shoes and uh, put a, a, get a bag of glass marbles that ch children play with, and put it on the on the carpet and just roll <coughs> slowly roll your feet 
forwards and backwards over the marbles and that is like having your very own uh, acu acupressure re I mean reflexology masseuse uh -huh. because as the, the little marbles roll under your feet they massage different parts of your your feet you know where the, where, where the uh, reflex reflexology points are located connected to every part of your body that's another great way to relax um, so let me know when you're done with that with stress management techniques <clears throat> exercise and great food choices yeah. you can decelerate stress damage and slow the aging process here's what you must try Okay. Number one, meditation. Mindfulness meditation can help your body process blood sugar better, help curb overeating and improve blood pressure. Try it. Look for a mindfulness meditation class in your community. Or sit comfortably with your eyes closed. Pay attention to your breathing. Gently refocus your attention on your breath whenever your mind wanders. What if a man focuses his attention on somebody else's breasts? Oh, you said breath or breasts? You said breasts? Huh? Huh? As in, you said breasts as in mammary glands? I said breath. Oh, breath. I'm breath. sorry. You know Check what? out sharecare.com for more instructions. Well, what I like to do is when I wake up and I have coffee ready for the day, um, I go into the living room. I, um, I sit in the lounge chair near all my exotic tropical house plants, air plants and what have you. I, put, I turn on the uh, full spectrum uh, uh, daylight bulb. And I sit in the lounge chair in a very quiet living room and I just contemplate and think and, and, and look at my plants as I drink the coffee. And it, it, to me it's therapeutic. Uh, dead silence. And uh, I, I notice how my plants have grown. Into the woods. Yeah, right, right. The only thing that's missing is the, the bird songs, the bird uh, calls. Mm -hmm. But other than that, that's how I start. Seren serenity. Serenity now! Serenity now! That was Frank Costanza <laughs> from Seinfeld. Serenity now! <laughs> anyway, I have a question for you. Remember uh, the recent interview that took place between Steve Autobato and uh, Chris Christie? Yeah, I didn't see it though. Well, it's on YouTube and Chris Christie sure shown his true colors. Talk about uh, being obnoxious and rude. He was he was in rare form, and Steve Autobato, you can tell by his mannerisms that he was getting very annoyed with Chris Christie, and he started. But he didn't pin him down, did he? He uh, didn't pin him down like he should have uh -huh. pinned him down, but he he didn't take any abuse from him, but. He didn't go after him yeah. like, let's say, a Barbara Buono did during the yeah. debates. Steve Autobato is like, um, I mean, he's an award-winning uh, political back. analyst, right? He wants him back for another time. That's yeah, you know, he, uh, he didn't take any abuse, but then again, he didn't pin him down. Right. So I was wondering if there's any readings concerning that interview. No. Very surprised at the local press for not having anything on that interview. I think there seems to be a lot of Chris Christie kiss asses in New Jersey. In the Jersey, well, who the hell do you think voted for him? In the Jersey media. Please. Yeah, who voted for him? And better question: Why do they vote for him? Second. Deep breathing. When you breathe in through your nose, count to four. And out through your mouth slowly, count to eight. That's a slow, controlled, deep breathing. It's 
some people use these mantras, you know, these uh, yogi mantras. They, you yeah. know, they recite the same mantras. Thing. Mantras. Mantras. I'm sorry. Mantras. Every they recite the mantras same. Mantras sounds like some kind of animal. Ma sounds like Mothra. Yeah. Monster movie. <coughs> Mantra. Yeah. Uh, Mothra. I mean, up. Uh, mantra. Mantra. Anyway, breathing like that sends beneficial nitric oxide into your lungs, encouraging your airways to expand. You'll instantly increase the oxygen level in your blood by up to 3%. Not bad. Time with friends. Yeah, real friends. Getting together to watch the big game. Going to a Friday night movie. Or however else you do it. Spending time with... <clears throat> Excuse me, supportive friends and family feels great. You sound like Tony the Tiger of <laughs> Sugar Frosted Flakes. And makes you healthier. Studies show that social support calms blood pressure, lowers stress hormone levels, and can slow your heart rate. Well, you know, pets have that effect. Cats, dogs, whatever, whatever you bond with, whatever you like, a bunny, you know. Uh, 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 that's why they're they're starting to bring over uh, animals to visit uh, uh, terminally ill people, and in nursing homes and 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 sick children in the hospital. They're, it's a new thing now. They're bringing all cute doggies and and animals, and they, and it actually lifts their spirits. And the same thing goes for people that are um, <laughs> home a lot, you know, shut-ins and, and the senior folk that are retired. You know, it, it does help them live longer to have something like that, like a loving cat. Yes. You know. <clears throat> so give your BFF a call today. And get together with someone you like or love this week. Oh, well, yeah, a good, a good roll in a hay is very therapeutic too. Music. Classical music. Not Metallica! No, not heavy metal, but you know, uh, let's say classical music. Lots of research shows listening to your favorite tunes can knock a point or two off your blood pressure, <clears throat> soothe stress yeah. hormone levels, and reduce pain. Yeah. Well, one of the great things about um, classical music is there's no lyrics, there's no negative lyrics to make you sad or anxious. <clears throat> Next, just chill at home. You mean or like away. Mr. Freeze from Batman, just chill? Whether you take a vacation, a staycation, kick back for an hour with a glass of wine, Sounds good. And a good book, or go for a soak in a tub. Plain old relaxation has big benefits. And if you're lucky enough to have a big hot tub or jacuzzi, all mm. the better. And a fireplace. If you're Vaca lucky to have both. Vacations can cut the risk for heart attacks. And heart disease related deaths in two big studies of men and women. Vacation and leisure, leisure time makes for a happier, more healthier, more productive employee. Uh, vacations cut the risk of heart attacks and heart disease related deaths in two big studies. And in one recent study, men who took time every day to relax actually lengthened their telomeres. You know, I don't think the Walton family of Walmart would actually go for this reading. Oh no, because when they, if they regard this as for their employees, then their employees are just wasting time. Oh, they don't want happy, healthy That's correct, because employees. they are, are replaceable. They are mere cogs in the great wheel of industry and can be replaced at a moment's notice. You heard what the... They're prawns. Jay I mean Gould, pawns. Huh? Jay Gould said back in the 1800s, 
I can hire one half of the working population to kill the other half. In other words, everybody has a price for the million dollar man? In other well, well, how do they get, in other words... Jay Gould, you didn't have to go to no million dollars, that's for damn sure. You know, when I, way back in the day, that's how I met, I met uh, Dr. Uh, Bill here, William Eisenman, Ph.D., uh, um, when I was working with seafood. That's how I met him. And one of the, uh, we had this really bitch of, a, of an assistant manager. Mm -hmm. Nobody could s stand her. She was like a uh, pain in the ass, always like uh, watching us and nagging and, you know, causing problems that were never there. You know, some people, managers do that. They cause problems that are not there. They try to fix things that are not there. The problem is not. We called her Helmet Head because she had so much hairspray in her hair. Her name was Athena Brock. Sure. And this bitch said, I had a conversation with her and it got a little political. And uh, I said, uh, what she says to me was, I believe in one, I believe in this. And this was way back in the early 2000s. He says, I, I believe this. If an employee, if a person, any person is desperate enough, they'll put up with or accept, put up with and accept anything for any minute amount of money. They'll, 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 they'll do the job for any amount, any salary, if they're desperate enough. This is what the bosses believe. So she might have been ahead of her time. <laughs> you know, but then again, and this is the mentality that they have now, right? Of course. If they're desperate enough, they'll do anything. They'll accept anything. I mean, that's what it's all about. It's always been about that. It's about making it and making it so you are dependent upon them for your very life. So this is a form of exploitation. Of course. Uh oh. And if you're a sociopath conservative, that feels no remorse about anything. The government should not help. No, but they should help the rich. Yes. It's okay to help them. Yeah. Well, they deserve help because why? They're rich. Oh, does that mean they're better than everyone yes, else? Yes, that does. And who says so? They they do. They do. They do. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Simply put, chilling out keeps you younger longer and gives you a younger real age what we discussed be right before that uh, was not part of chilling out it was about high stress uh -huh. what we just talked about before super high stress that's why it's so important to chill out to meditate to take a much needed vacation but yeah. try that uh, reflexology thing. If you're if you're an office worker that's very busy, mm. try it. Go to a dollar store and get a bag of uh, glass marbles that children play with, and just gently, uh, slowly roll your feet forwards and backwards on the marbles under your desk, and you will f f it'll you'll feel the difference. It'll be uh, wonderful. Anyway, yeah, just make sure when you're done, you collect the marbles because you don't want any, uh, you slip don't want slide, any, slip a sliding away. you don't want to, uh, end up tripping and breaking your neck or, yeah. or one of your co-workers tripping on the marbles and going, flying up in the air. Bang, zoom, Dallas, to the moon. To the moon, yeah. I saw this cartoon of, uh, uh, NASA astronauts uh, stopping by on the moon and they say, oh, the guy goes, oh, look, it's Alice Cramden. And they, and they show her dead lying on the moon. Hey. Anyway, um, what, time, what time do we have? We got ten after. Actually going for quarter after. I think that, I think that's a wrap. That's a wrap. I think we better call, call it a day. I... A week. Thank you very much for joining us for Uncensored Hard-Hitting Truth. This is James P. Madonna of Megalife 21, the hardest internet talk radio station on the planet, saying have a safe and healthy week.
and we'll see you next time. God willing. Next time will be, when does a New Year's Eve, uh, uh, what day that. does it fall on? <clears throat> I believe it's Wednesday. Yep. Not this, we this Wednesday? This Wednesday, coming up, baby. You're trying to tell me yes. that this Wednesday 31. is New Year's <clears throat> Eve already? And I, I did not even announce this show as being the official, our <laughs> official New Year's Eve show. New Year's Eve, New Year's Day 2015 show. I totally lost track of the calendar. All right. I'm, uh, better late than never. We'll this, see this, you in 2015. We'll see you in 2015. Have a safe, and I emphasize the word safe, New Year's Eve. Don't do anything foolish. Don't drink and drive. And be and, nice to the cops. Right, and we'll, and we'll see you and try to, you know, me, I avoid the highways. I take the back roads because I don't want to run into any DWI stops. Yeah. Be smart. All right, and have have a good one. Happy New Year. I see. I, I would have said this at the beginning of the show. Happy New Year, um, 2015, to all of our viewers, our fans, our you know, our group members, to everybody, our our group administrators on Facebook, uh, to my near dear, very close friend Miho, sweetheart. Happy New Year to you. Oh, by the way. I sent Miho one of the these scarves. She now has an official uh, Mega Life 21 James P. Madonna boa. That must have cost a fortune. Oh yeah, this is black sable. No, no, no. To black send sable from uh, from from to Siberia. Send to oh, I'm only kidding. Japan. You know what? Not a fortune. But you know what shocked me? I, it shocked me that they, the post office told me they, they could not assure when she will receive the package. Oh. They said it's estimated one to two weeks, but do you know she got it in, a, in like a few days? She got it before Christmas, which was a very good thing, and I was very surprised that she got it so quickly. So, well. great job, United States Postal Service. I salute you. Um, uh, of course, the Chiseler's Hall of Shame, uh, I did a special holiday video, it's, it's on the internet about the, the fine jewelry industry, uh, ripping off all these poor men out there, these suckers, by spending thousands of dollars on uh, diamond rings for, for their woman, diamond jewelry, and uh, it's, it's nothing but a racket, because you'll, you'll end up getting a tiny fraction of what you paid for it, it's it's a racket. Get a get a cubic zirconia. It'll look better, and it won't set you back too much money. And if she doesn't like it, then she's just materialistic mm -hmm. user and a gold digger. That's it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, and 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 that that will be the Chisler's Hall of Shame inductee is the fine jewelry industry, Zales. K Jewelers, Jared. and the most sickening of all, Jared. <laughs> all of them are in the Chiseler's Hall of Shame. Shame on you for, for, for the barrage of, of um, commercials, pagan Christmas holiday commercials that I had to endure every evening. <laughs> we'll see you. In the new year. In the new year, yes. What, what is that, Old Lang Syne? Old Lang Syne, and yeah. And they used to say, did they also sing the Happy Days of Here Again? Um, the, they did that in 1929. Oh, Happy Day. Well, you're not going to sing that today. That's for friggin' sure. That's for damn sure. Say goodbye and Happy New Year to these people. Yeah, Happy New Year, everybody. Goodbye. Uh, see you in 2015. 2015. This has been a Mega Life 21 production.